welcome first lady in the women's department. We have some very exciting news. Women's weekend is coming up. We want to invite all our GTB Nation sisters and we encourage you to bring a friend. That's right, Women's Weekend. It is February the 18th through the 20th. That's a Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Come out expecting God. We'll see you there. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. It is good to be here. Who's blessed to be alive today? Come on. Praise God. Thank God for our wonderful team, our wonderful staff here at Greater True Vine. I just want you to go ahead and just greet a couple of people on this live tonight and just type in the chat and just tell them, just say, welcome to the, to the Greater True Vine Church. Come on. Just tell them, welcome, welcome. And to our guests tonight, we're just glad to have you tonight. And those of you who watches us on Facebook or YouTube, thank you for being here. And we believe that God has a word for you tonight. Who's, who's, who's glad that God woke you up today? Come on and clap your hands and give me some emojis, all right? In spite of this Omicron virus that's going around, this crazy COVID and this pitiful pandemic, we, we still have joy. Praise God. Joy unspeakable, full of glory. It is just good to be alive. Now, I want to continue this teaching, but before we get started, you know what I always ask you to do, like and share this broadcast tonight. I, I, I just believe that this is the year that God going to save some people. <laughs> Y'all believe that? Yeah, I, I really do. We, we here at Greater True Vine, we are believing God for 100 souls this year. God, God can do it, amen? Uh, to the utmost, yeah, Christ still saves. So we're, we, we've been in this teaching called Back to the Basics, Back to the Basics. And we think it's some critical teaching here because uh, Back to the Basics. And, and, and what we think are the basics, the Lord clearly said to me, don't really call them the basic, because there are so many people who are good Christians who don't know the basics. <laughs> I mean, don't even know where the Beatitudes are found. They don't necessarily know where the fruit of the Spirit or the distinction, vis-a-vis, -vis, fruit of the Spirit, the giftings of the Spirit, gifts or gifted people of God, where he said, I give some. Uh, in Ephesians, I give some pastors, some teachers, uh, some apostles, the gifted people or the gifts of God to people. So in a very real sense, I'm one of God's gift to you. Uh, why don't you thank him for it? <laughs> Amen. Praise God. But he said, I give some apostles. These, these are gifted people, God that gives to the church. And, and then there's our, there are the gifts of the Spirit. And then there is... Um, as we were dealing with, uh, been dealing with this whole month, the fruit of the Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit. And I really want to make sure we distinguish 1 Corinthians 12.4. That's your homework. You just write it down. The Bible says there are different kinds of gifts. A and the Scripture says in verse 4, and the Lord, NLT says, is the source of them all. He's the source of them all. They all come from God. In 1 Corinthians 12, verse 7, you'll find that it says that each person has been given a gift. And there you have to be careful because, again, because I've taught you this, there are people who say, well, I have the gift of miracles. I, I have the gift of healings. And my question has always been to you, well, if you have the gift of healing, how come anybody in your family died? And how come you don't live at the emergency room? Like, you know, no need to take them in. Just bring them to me. Mm. I mean, you should just shut down Methodist Hospital. You should shut it down. So we all know, and, and this is coming up in our teaching, you don't necessarily have the gift of healing. You have the gift of the Spirit, or you have the Holy Spirit who possesses all the gifts. Yeah, he being able to flash forth any gift out of you. That's the Greek word, phanerius is, is the word, a flashing forth. Yeah, don't let me confuse you. How many of you know that God can use you how he wants to? 
Yeah, you can be at home and the Lord tell you to lay hands on your child because pastor's not going to make it in time and you pray for them and you lay your hands on somebody and a miracle comes forth and that person gets healed, baby choking on something. They think he can't breathe and you begin to pray God in the name of Jesus and that baby get it. God can use anybody here. Come on. The Spirit of God can give you a word of knowledge for your child or for somebody, and you just say, you know what, I just sense this going on with you, and you like, where did that come from? Didn't the old folk used to have that? Come on. Didn't the old folk used to have that? They just walk up to you and tell you, you know what, daughter, you pregnant. And you, and you thought grandmama was a witch. No, grandmama wasn't no witch. Grandmama had the Holy Ghost. How grandmama know? Didn't nobody know? She like, you know what? You pregnant. You like, what? What, grandma? Or, or I had a dream last night. You know what? I was dreaming about some fish last night. I said, somebody in this family pregnant. Come on. Talk to me, all you dreamers out there. Come on. Say amen. Yeah, you remember grandmama can dream something and it come to pass. Yeah, the gifting of the spirit. So that's 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 12, and I want you to do your homework on that. But the reason I'm talking about that, because we are, you know, making a different, differentiating between the gifts of the spirit and what we're teaching, which is the fruit of the spirit. And I was arguing last week about this, that which one is more godly? Neither. They're all critical. The gifts of the Spirit, vis-a-vis -vis the fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit is more about lifestyle and behavior where the uh, charismata, the, the charisma, the gifting of the Spirit of how God can use you and all of a sudden you be praying for people and word of knowledge, speaking in tongues and interpreting tongues. Pastor, do you believe in all that? Every bit of it. Because, see, we're not as, here it is, a sensationalist ministry. What is that? In that, that the gifts ceased after the apostles uh, uh, died, as many other churches believe that, that they believe that there is none of that. That was just the first century. Now that we have the whole of Scripture, there is no need for the gifts. So, therefore, many beautiful churches, they're, they're going to heaven just like we are, but they don't believe in what we call the gifts of the Spirit. Yeah, they think that was for the first century and, and that it ceased after the first century. And in that sense, they become in what we call sensationalists. But we're not. Come on, tell somebody we believe in all of it. Go ahead. Come on, just, say, just type in the chat. Say, say, we believe in all of that. And I really do. I believe God can do whatever. He, he want, I, I just believe he can just do whatever what he wants to do or, and who he want to do it through. I believe he's a healer right now. Yeah, he can talk to you right now. He can talk through you right now. We believe that, okay? So I'm just laying some foundation as to what I'm teaching on tonight. And these are some things that some good saved people don't know. Trust me, yeah. There's, there's some people that's been saved for years that don't know this. So I want to get this into your spirit. Okay, so we've been talking about uh, back to the basics, the fruit of the spirit. And let's go back to Galatians 5, verse 22. And you need to get this into your spirit. And here it is. And, and I still say that every woman, every man should put this on your refrigerator, get a sticky note or something, because it is the barometer of how you're doing. It, it just basically tells you how you're doing in your spiritual life. I call it the proof of the Spirit. But here it is. By contrast, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against such things. So what I am arguing to every person is the way to judge yourself is to always see how the fruit is flowing. How is the fruit flowing? And then here's something that's going to bless you. Which one of those lists <laughs> tends to be missing when you're off? <laughs> because it might be one that by your uh, very nature you can always kind of get away with because by nature. Remember I said that last week? Have you ever met somebody that don't even go to church at all and they are nicer than you? Come on, tell the truth. Have you ever ran into somebody and you like, something wrong? I had to go back and pray and say, now this person don't even go to church, 
but they seem like they they have a way better disposition than me. Come on, come on, tell the truth, shame the devil. Yeah, someone you work with or someone you knew and, and you knew they weren't necessarily Christians, but but you like, man, they they have a a, a level of a, a very jovi, jovial disposition. They just seem happy all the time. Just seem like they just have this is by the very nature of who they are and some stuff and I'll go here has nothing to do with you necessarily being a Christian yeah God puts certain attributes in you from birth now it is up to you to walk in the fullness of God and experience God's best and I know this scares some people because they want everything to be theological or spiritual but it's not it's not. Some things by your very nature, God put in you as giftings. Come on. Now, some of the best rappers, singers, entertainers, not thinking about Jesus. I mean, not even thinking about him, but you cannot deny the gift that's in them. Yeah, God put something in them that you can play all, all you want, but it's in them. It can be better, more maximized if they come in the fullness of God. Ooh, is that good? That good? So last week, so last week, and here's what I'm trying to say. I want you to really look at this scripture, and then we're going to finish unpacking this tonight. Here we go. Love, joy, uh, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Look at them again. Look at them again, because I'm going to ask you a question. Which one of those start tripping when you're not right? <laughs> Yeah, mine is patience. Come on, you go ahead and type on it if you don't mind your neighbor know. Mine, I, I, I'm going to be transparent. Mine is patience. My patience gets real short when I'm off. And uh, many of you, you can get mean right quick, real quick, or you'll fall into depression quickly. Yeah, you or you lose your joy. Your, your, your past plays with you a lot. Uh, or your present situation, and, and you find yourself in a melancholy mindset that when you, uh, uh, when you got to say, wait a minute, wait a minute, man, I, I, I'm off today. Uh, let me get back to God. Let me, let me get back to prayer. And so we start to unpack them last week, and, and let me go fast because remember love, love. Remember that? Agape love, we're not talking about human love. We're talking about the God kind of love. It's the kind of love that can make you love the unlovable. It's best depicted on Calvary when Christ stretched his arm out and said, no greater love than this. The scripture says that a man, what, lay down his life for his friends. But I say unto you, love your enemies. Matthew 6, how can you love your enemies with human love? Yeah, it takes a special kind of love to love the unlovable. And by the way, but I'm a good, good mother pastor. I, I love my children. Let me tell you something. Even animals love what comes out of them. <laughs> and I'm not hating on that because there's some terrible mothers and fathers who don't care nothing about their children, which I can't get in my head. But just loving your children, believe it or not, it's by your nature. That's, that's what you call the f a family kind of love. Anything that came out of you by your nature, unless you reel off, you know, somewhere, you're you going to love what came out of you. So I'm not hating on that, but just know that you're a great parent, and that's a beautiful thing. It's another kind of love, and it should be commended. But there's people who don't even go to church nowhere who ain't going to let you mess with their baby. Yeah, there, there, there's girls, there's women that never walked in this church or any other, or in nobody's church, but they're going to feed their babies, they're going to take care of their babies, and some of you know that before you you got right with God, you still love your babies. So watch this. That wasn't necessarily agape love. That was a mama's love. Ooh, that's good. That's good. Now, you probably had agape love, too, if you were a believer. But don't confuse sterogain, the Greek word sterogain, the family kind of love, or, or eros, or sexual love, or phileo. Yeah, you and your girl, you will fight for you, man. You love that woman. You love that girl, but you will, you will fight for her. It was, it was friendship love. So there's so many different kinds of love, that, and they're all real. But agape love, mm, agape love is, is the love the Bible says in Romans 5 that's shed abroad by the Holy Spirit. Now, who wants God to give you his love? 
Yeah, it, it, it's that love when you know a person be talking about you. <laughs> oh, it's that kind of love where you just know. You know it in your bones, in your spirit, that you know a person is talking about you. And then let's go worse than that, where they did something that violated you or, or to someone that you love. Woo! My God, that's a, that's a whole nother kind of love. Now, let me, let me move the joy right quick. Here you go. Here it is. Joy is deep and abiding inner rejoicing, which was promised to those who abide in Christ. Joy, joy, joy. The joy of the Lord is different than happiness. It, it is an inner joy. Yeah, inner joy is it, something that you feel that will make you smile and laugh in the car, in the house. The old folks used to say, makes me laugh when nothing's funny. Remember that song? Remember that song? What is this that I feel deep inside? What is this? Whatever it is, it won't let me hold my peace. Come on, what is it? i tell you what it is. It's the joy of the Lord. The joy of the Lord is so wonderful. Anybody got joy right now? Anybody got joy? Give me some light. Give me some hearts. Anybody got joy right now? Oh, I don't believe you. I don't believe you because all your bills are paid. I don't believe you because your husband is perfect. I don't believe you because you have no problem. I want to talk to some people that have problems and joy. Come on, give me some heart. Yeah, that's who I want to talk to. I want to talk to some people that have problems and joy. That's the real stuff. Yeah, stuff is going on in your life and nobody and anybody with your same problems, come on, wouldn't have the joy that you have. It is an inner rejoicing. It's different than I just got a raise and I'm happy. It's different than, oh, I just met somebody cute. It's different than my husband is so nice. That's beautiful, but it's not necessarily joy because sinners have that. Yeah, let a sinner get paid. Let a sinner get a nice house. Let a sinner get a new car. I'm trying to tell you that what you have, that's different than that. It it is the fruit of the Spirit. Yeah. And if you don't have the Holy Spirit, you cannot enjoy the fullness of what I'm teaching you. Thank God for the Holy Spirit. Come on. Everybody say, thank God for the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. And then the next one, peace. I got, it. I got stuck here last week. Peace, peace. You know Jesus said in John 14, 27. He said, peace I leave with you, not as the world gives. He said, my peace. Peace I leave with you. They had no idea in terms that I'm leaving the Holy Spirit, which comes on the scene in Acts chapter 2. And by the way of the Holy Spirit, he said, peace I leave with you. Watch this. You need to tell everybody <laughs> that's around you or everybody that's watching virtually on you with you right now, just type and say, Jesus left me something that you can, ain't going to take. Go ahead. Oh, yeah. Jesus left me something that you're not going to take. He didn't say a million dollars I leave with you. He said, peace I leave with you. So whenever you find yourself tripping, you just say, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Jesus left me some peace. <laughs> peace, he said, I leave with you. And I touched on this last week, and I want to say it again. Even my children, yeah, yeah I, I'm, I'm teaching all of that. Yeah, whoever you date, whoever you marry, baby, don't marry nobody that's going to interrupt our family's peace. Oh, you'll have some trouble. Yeah, that's what it's going to be. You're going to have some trouble. But to my singles out there, come on, talk. I'm a single lady, I'm a single lady, and my dudes too, don't hook up with nobody that's going to bother your peace. Yeah, how important is peace to God? How important it is, uh, Pastor, uh, peace to God? It is so important. Peace is so important for you from God is that he said, God said, through the apostle Paul, he said, if the unbelieving spouse does not want to stay, let them go. Because God has called you to what? Peace. That's scripture. That's scripture. And you know what? <laughs> I've been pastoring a little bit just too long because, you know what, I think I'm getting old and mean. Y'all pray for your boy. Pray for me because I done had couples come up to me and say, Pastor, he, he's gone. He, he, he don't want to come back to me. Oh, well. And then, you know, I used to say, well, daughter, let's just, let's just believe God that he's going to come back. <laughs> but now I'm like, what? 
you talking about the one that's been driving you crazy for 25 years? Praise God. <laughs> you can go looking for him if you want to. It might, baby, daughter, it might be your second shot. <laughs> oh, y'all know he's liking me today. Y'all don't want to deal with this real stuff. Listen, my grandmama used to say, I don't want nobody who don't want me back. My pastor used to say, you don't want to be handcuffed to nobody that don't want to be handcuffed to you. I wish I had some real people out there. Some of y'all, I just don't know. Pastor, he's been gone for three years, and, and he got babies by this other woman, and he He's staying with somebody else, and I'm like, and you still want to, daughter, he must be the bomb. <laughs> hey, you got to know who you are in Christ Jesus. I ain't nobody sloppy seconds. If you don't want me, God will give me somebody that want me. I wish I had some real people watching. Some of y'all are just too in love. <laughs> I'm sorry, three of y'all are looking at me and saying, that's me, Pastor. I understand, daughter, but you, you ain't got but one chance. <laughs> talking about you don't want me, you don't want me, uh, here I am walking the floors at night crying. The, let me tell you something. The Bible is so serious. The Bible's serious, so serious. The Bible said if the unbelieving spouse leave, let them depart. The Bible says if somebody says, you know what, I'm leaving you because you go to church too much. I don't want that Jesus stuff because, you know, we met in the club, and I never claimed to be no Christian. You talking about you want to go to church, and you want Jesus, I'm gone. No offense. I, I don't want to be with you no more because I don't, I don't, I don't, want, I don't want the God thing, so I, I'm going to leave. The Bible says, don't, go ahead and cry. Go on and cry, but... And, and, and I really mean this. I, I know I'm parking here, but I got to finish. The Lord want me to impress upon your heart. I want the GTV members, the Greater True Vine Church members, not to make any more decisions that's going to interrupt your peace. Here's what else I didn't say last week. What I did say last week is that peace is not the absence of pain. It's the peace that's keeping me in my pain. Woo! If y'all knew how good that was, peace is not some medicine that you're going to take and have no problem. Peace is in the worst time of my life. He's keeping me. Peace does not mean I'm not shedding tears. Peace does not mean that I don't feel a little down sometimes. It's the peace of God that's keeping me. Because who needs peace when stuff is perfect? Oh, this is so good, everybody. Let me tell you something. The purpose of peace is for problems. <laughs> because when things are peaceful, who needs peace? It, it, it's when life hits and the average person, I'm serious, will be going off and cussing and fighting or drinking or clubbing or something to get the pain off of them. But not you. Not you. And I'm going to say it again. God will give you the kind of peace. He will give you the kind of peace that people closer to you think you're in denial. <laughs> Have you ever heard people be whispering, um, um, she, she just ain't let it out yet, child. She, she ain't faced the truth yet. She ain't faced it yet. You know what? Tell somebody, type in the comments, say, I did face it. God is keeping me. Go ahead. Come on, tell them. Tell them, say, I know exactly what happened. I know exactly who died. I know exactly who left. I know exactly who got in trouble, who walked away. And the Lord is keeping me in the midst of it right now. Come on, raise your hand. Oh, you ought to give God some praise. The peace of God be over your life by the way of the Holy Spirit. And I speak the peace of God over your child situation, your husband situation, your wife situation, and your finances, every area of your life. I speak the peace of God over you in Jesus' name. Now, because I prayed that, you go out tomorrow and buy a car you can't afford don't you call on peace. <laughs> I'm telling you what he told me because I've seen people who do everything they want to do and say, girl, I ain't worrying about it. God going to work it out. You cannot put God in that. Yeah, you cannot. Come on, you ought to type in that coming right now. Tell say You can't put God in that so he don't show up. It look like he failed. See, see once you've been taught 
the principles of tithing and saving and living within your means, and then you do things or date people that take you out of your peace, and then you want to call on peace, and then you get mad at God, you get mad at me, you get mad at the church like the word don't work. <laughs> Listen, I'm telling you, I've been doing this a long time. Some people tell me, Pastor, I, I stopped because I've been trying. I, I say, well, let's talk about how you was really trying. T tell me what was your schedule for the day. What, what did you do in a day? What, well, Pastor, I tried. No, 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 no. No, did you really try? Did you really try? So peace is something beyond my control. And he'll come in my situation and he'll keep me. Because you didn't know your husband was going to do that. How could you know that your husband would do that? You, you need the peace of God right now. How could you know that such and such was going to pass away? How did you know that he was going to make that move? That, that's what peace is about. You got me? You didn't know the job was going to let you go. You didn't know that we were going to have this pandemic. You didn't know all these things was coming. You didn't know the doctor would tell you that. That's what peace is for. Peace is not you just do whatever you want to do. Sometimes you're nervous because of what you keep doing. Ooh, I got to stand up on that. Let me say that again. I said sometimes you are nervous because of what you keep doing. Yeah, if I got three bills on the table that I done made, you need to be nervous. <laughs> and I, I hate to say this, but if you keep doing stuff after you receive the teaching and then stuff keeps piling up, and then you like, I call on the peace of God. God is like, until you get in order and trust me and tithe and save, and then I'll come in your situation. But if you keep doing and dating and doing and messing with dumb people, you're going to always be interrupted. And I don't want to see you in that way. All right, so you ready for this? You ready for this? Whatever you've done in the past, in the name of Jesus, it's under the blood. But we're going to begin principles right now. Yeah. Because you got, because you, you, you get to get to be in a certain age and you start thinking, mm, that's going to mess with my peace. Yeah. I, I, I think I like where I'm at right now. And I, I yeah, I, I don't think I want to do that. I don't think I want to date him, oh, him her. That, I think that's going to mess with my peace. How many people got enough stuff to deal with? Hmm? without adding some more stuff. Come on. <laughs> I don't need to add more stuff than the stuff that I'm already dealing with right now. So, okay, let's go to patience. Come on, let's, let's finish up tonight. Uh, patience is the quality of forbearance under provocation. Now, I really need you to understand the word provocation. Say provocation. Say under provocation. Because one does not need patience when kids are getting straight A's. <laughs> I'm just helping you understand this lesson tonight. See, if my kids are getting straight, straight A's, who needs patience? <laughs> when, when your kids saying, yes, ma'am, and your husband like, hi, baby, how can I please you today? And all the bills are paid and, and everyone is doing exactly what they're supposed to do. Don't nobody need no patience right there. <laughs> you need patience when people are acting crazy. <laughs> so it's under provocation. It's under stress. Now, now, when we say it entertains no thoughts of retaliation, even when wrongfully treated, okay, okay, who have suffered with patience in your life? Come on, give me, give me some likes if you have. Who have suffered with patience in your life? Listen, just have one child <laughs> or marry anybody. Don't matter who you marry, they will test your patience at times. And time will teach you and the Holy Spirit to say, God, I call on your patience right now. Now, for me personally, for me personally, this is the fruit I know exactly when I'm off. Because that's the one, that's the one thing that's leaving first off the list. That's the one that's leaving first in my life. Yeah, because I'm moving fast. I got a lot of things going on. I need the people around me. I need my staff to flow People, you know, that's, that's connecting me. I'm like, oh, so, so now I'm learning. Listen, listen. There have been times, and let me tell you what I do, and you'll get to know yourself so well. There will be times when everybody, okay, ha ha have you ever had a day when everybody you love did something stupid? <laughs> give, me, give, give me some likes. Everybody close to you doing something stupid, you like, I don't like nobody. You ever had that day 
And it will come, and, and please, Lord, don't lead people and be responsible for people and all of that. And, and there are times I ain't got my best stuff that day, and, and stress is coming from everywhere. I got this, I got this going on. Have you ever had a day that you haven't had your best stuff? Come on. Aren't you glad to have the Holy Spirit, though, to monitor to you? Watch this. But how many of you knew one day that was patience from the Holy Spirit that allowed me to keep my cool right there? When I wanted to go off. Oh, y'all not catching that. Y'all not catching it. How many of you were absolutely sure that you were just like, thank you, Jesus? Because, see, that was a time I would have reacted differently right there. And guess what that was? The Holy Spirit. That was the Holy Spirit. Have you ever had a situation where you thought to yourself, thank you, Jesus? Ooh, because I'm godly proud right there because that person kind of said something twisted to me. They said something kind of off to me or, or your children. Listen, listen, we got four children at every age. And I'm telling y'all, they'll say something and I'll be like, uh, don't they know I'm from the old school? I, I see, I'm a 70s baby. I'm from the 70s. The 70s was just different because, you know what, we couldn't even have no opinion when I was growing up. There was no opinion about nothing. My mom wouldn't let me have no opinion. Yeah, there was no friendly parenting. It was like, shut up. <laughs> Everybody hit you. You ain't it, y'all. We, yeah, we, yeah. When we see grown folk talking, we had to walk out the room. We couldn't stay in the room. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but now we got to read these manuals. we like, okay, what do you think about now? But how many of you want God to give you the patience of God? You got to have patience. I'm telling you, you got to have patience. You got kids. You, you're married. don't matter. You got to have patience. Hey, if you don't get the Holy Spirit, here, listen to me. I'm going to say this again. Y'all may not like this, but I'm telling the truth. If you don't get the Holy Spirit, you'll cuss at somebody. If you get away from your word, you'll snap at somebody. You'll go off on somebody. I know. I, I made that mistake. I wish I could do so, have some do-over. Anybody close to me would tell you. I'd come back and say, you know, I'm so sorry. I lost it. I'm, I'm off today. This coming at me, that coming at me. And, and don't the people closest to you get the worst of you? <laughs> oh, I'm going to say that again. Don't the people closest to you. Get the worst of you, which is why you really got to pray because there are certain people you're never going to let see the worst of you because they can't handle it. I, oh, y'all don't know how I'm, I'm helping somebody. I'm, I'm talking good tonight. I know I'm, I'm just being real and practical tonight. So the people close to you will get the worst of you because you know they'll forgive you when it's over. So you have to say, listen. Don't let this woman I'm married to get the worst of me. I want her to get the best of me. Now, something about being married, and I would say this, and this is, this is leadership stuff, mostly that I'm talking about now, tonight, but, but you do have to have a few people close to you that you don't have to always got to be Jesus. Ooh, I know somebody trying to write that down, so I'm going to say it again. Let me rewind it. Let me just rewind it. You have to have a few people close to you that you don't have to always got to be Jesus. Because if not, you won't have no place to be a little bit human. And I've learned that. Oh, I've learned that in my years of, of leading people and being a pastor. I, 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 don't, I don't have people close to me that's too, uh, uh, that are, you know, uh, you hurt my feelings, uh, you hurt my feelings, and, uh, and I got to always say, I'm sorry, will you, will you please forgive me? Well, I didn't mean to. Uh, uh, you need somebody close to you that say, okay, pastor, go ahead. That's okay, pastor, go ahead. I know what's going on with you. You, you just, pastor, you just dealt with that, and that person just did this, and, and this is going on, and you got to take care of this, and, and pastor, that's okay. You ain't got your best stuff today. I'm, I'm all right, Pastor. No, 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 you ain't got to ask for forgive, forgive. No, I'm all right, Pastor, because uh, you can't have, let me tell you something, you can't have people around you that can't handle none of that. But you still, no matter what happens, say, Lord, give me the patience for everybody. Come on, who, need God? who needs God to give you more patience in 2022? Come on, come on, who needs that? Come on, come on, give us some life, come on. Well, then I speak that over your life. In Jesus' name, I speak that, that the fruit of the Spirit called patience will come forth in you. Things, I, I, I declare and decree tonight that, the, that things that used to upset you quickly will not upset you this year. 
And it's not because of some magic, but because of the Holy Spirit. Come on, lift those hands and say, I receive the patience of God. Come on, will you type that in the comment? Say, I receive the patience of God. And when you get it and receive it, your spouse will enjoy you more. Your children will enjoy you more. Your friends. All right, here it is. Let's go. Kindness. Here it is. Kindness. Kindness. It is benevolence in actions such as God demonstrated toward men since God is kind towards sinners as Christians should display the same virtue. Now, this is important because I want you to catch this. It is the benevolence in action. Anything you do not give away is not a gift. So because you are kind, one must show kindness. So it, it is the idea of doing kind things. And the scripture says in Matthew 6, as you do those things, you don't have to tell everybody what you did. Just do it privately, and God will reward you openly. Acts of kindness, acts of kindness, finding ways to be kind. But, Pastor, I don't have a whole lot of money. Let me tell you something. It is so much that you can do to show kindness to a person, from holding the door to braiding somebody's hair, picking up the mail and taking it to their house. God, let me show kindness. And you know what? I'm asking uh, for Greater True Vine Church. I want this church to be known for kindness. So I want all of you to do an act of kindness so people will have the reputation that, that they know that that's what Greater True Vine Church does. That's what GTV does. That's what Christians do. Is that good, everybody? Is that good? Come on, give me some hearts if, that, if you like that. Come on, goodness. Here it is, goodness. Here it is. May be thought of both as an uprightness of soul and as action reaching out to others to do good even when it's not deserved. Okay, goodness. It's the first cousin to kindness. Yeah, goodness and kindness are first cousin. They flow together. And action to reaching out to others. Do good to them that hate you. Mm. Do good to them that hate you. Pray for those that despitefully use you. Lord, put goodness in me. And the Holy Spirit does that. And I, I said this to somebody. I said this to somebody one time. The other, actually, about a couple of weeks ago, there is nothing in me. How do you know? Let me tell you. How, how do you know you've been changed? I'm about to throw, I'm about to throw this at you. From the bottom of my heart, and I, and I hope you can say this, I have and you have too. I have mistakenly hurt people. And who wish you could have had some days that you didn't do what you did? Mm. Now, let me tell you how you know he's in you. I don't know how on purpose to hurt nobody. You, you didn't hear what I just said. I don't care what you do to me. I cannot lay in my bed and say, oh, they did what? Okay, this, this is what I'm about to do to them. Oh, oh I'm going to get on social media and say all this stuff. I'm just going to blast them out. On, so I'm going to get on Facebook. I'm going to answer. I'm just going to get on Twitter. See, I don't know how to do that. That's, that's not in me. Yeah, and I done had some people do some dirty stuff to me. I, I don't know how to say, okay, they did what? Well, I'm going to call their family and see if I can stir this up. Or, or, or I'm going to put this out there. You know, I, I'll just feel it. Uh, I'm not going to lie. I feel it. It hurt. But I'm not going to retaliate because why? I'm a Christian. See, some of y'all are like, Pastor, uh, I retaliate fine. <laughs> then we're going to have to pray for you about this fruit. No, nah, but I promise you, my wife and I never laid in the bed and said, okay, okay, babe, this is what we're going to do. And, and, and I know for a fact, based on what people have done, they actually planned to hurt me, and they were Christians. How can a Christian, how can a saved person plan to hurt somebody? You may hurt them on mistake, but God will put a goodness in you. Come on, talk to me, somebody. There's, a good, there's goodness in you. Come on, you're not being arrogant. Lay hands on yourself and say, there's goodness in me. Go ahead, go ahead. Say, I do good by people. No, you're not bragging. You're saying what the Scripture says. You have the Holy Spirit, and out of the Holy Spirit flows goodness. So when you feel like doing something bad, you say, goodness is in me. Goodness come out of me. Not bad things. I can't watch that. I can't do that. Goodness is in me. I do good by people. 
So when you do bad or you want to do bad to somebody, you say, that's not the Holy Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit is not working in me right now. Holy Spirit, I call on the goodness of God to come through me right now and flash forth and let me be a blessing to somebody. All right, I'm out of time. I'm out of time. But I got to give you this. Say gentleness. Come on, say gentleness. A, a person who is submissive to God's word, it is considerate of others when discipline is needed. Okay, to be disciplined, to be gentle. Yeah, <laughs> my wife always tells me, be gentle, baby. Be gentle. Be gentle. Be gentle. I'll be talking to one of the kids, a baby girl or whatever. She said, now be gentle, baby. I said, okay, yeah, you're right. Okay. She, she, can't, she had to remind me, no, she's a girl. Uh, she's a girl, baby. She can't handle that. Okay. Okay, well, how can I say that? Okay, <laughs> but, but there really is. There's, there's a gentle spirit that you want to say, Lord, give that to me. That, that's why before this pandemic, this pitiful pandemic, Lord, that's, that's what got us grieving. You know what, well, before this pandemic, we, we like to hug everybody so you can feel the gentleness of God. Yeah, that's one of the reasons. Uh, and I, and whatever it is, just how you feel about it, you know, that's one of the reasons. Uh, and I'm let you know, you know where I stand. My church know where I stand on. I am vaccinated. I'm not telling anybody to do but that's where I'm saying I'm an essential worker. And I do it because I, 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 I'm a pastor. I, 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 ha, I, I'm, I'm an essential worker. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm a public servant. And I'm a servant of God's people. So I, I, I want to, to be protected. And so I can protect others so I can continue to have at least some type of normalcy. But before this pandemic, okay, you know, we, we, we like to hug people. Yeah, we like to hug everybody so you can feel the gentleness of God. Some members we hug, they get real stiff when you hug them. And you can tell maybe, maybe they would never held gently. Mm. I, I, I don't, I don't, uh -uh, don't want all that touch. No, 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 no. They said, no, no, no. I said, okay, okay. But I just want to show them the love of God. Who wants to have that in your spirit? Who wants to have that in your spirit? Now, here's the last one. Here's the last one, and that is self-control. Now, this might be the most important, so I want to spend a little time here. It denotes self-mastery and no doubt primarily relates to curbing the fleshly impulses just described. Self-control, self-control. Self-control, come on, it's not that deep. It's telling yourself what to do. Everybody say control yourself. Come on, type, type in the comment, control yourself. Now, isn't it something that you want to control a whole lot of other people and don't do what? <laughs> control what? Yourself. <laughs> First Corinthians says this, there is no temptation coming unto men whereby God will make an escape. In other words, there is no sin I had to do. Don't ever say, Flip Wilson, the devil made me do it. No, no, I decided to do it. See, the biggest one I want to lay on some brothers here and some women, too, is self-control. Not that any one of them is more important than the other ones, but, but they all should be flowing together. But I want to end this teaching series tonight with this. Lord, give me the ability Oh, what? Someone, someone told me one time that they like somebody that don't like them back and how bad they feel about how they feel. And I bless them with this and you should receive this. You should receive this also. I said, I told him, I said, don't beat yourself up. You can't always control how you feel, but just control what you do. Mm. Now that's going to bless you. See, sometimes feelings are stupid. Yeah, you ever felt something you ain't want to feel or felt something for somebody that you didn't want to feel it for? Come on, like, like how can I like you and you did this? Okay, that's cool. You're off right now. You, that's what you feel. feel. Let me tell you something. Feelings are crazy and stupid and fleshly. And, and what, I, what I am going to control now is what I do. Oh, I, I feel for you, but I'm not sleeping with you. <laughs> oh, I feel this, but I'm not going to do it. You control what? you do. I have self-control. I don't always control. See, this is going to bless you. You don't always control how you feel. You feel a certain way and be mad for feeling that way. I may feel that way, but I know what I'm about to do. I'm about to pray for this person right now in the name of Jesus. One area that I take serious about is the area of social media and TV and stuff that will mess up my marriage. Mm. 
Some stuff I take serious, y'all. Everybody got their pet peeves. I don't play with my marriage. Yeah, 21 years this year. I know you hear me say it a lot, but I take it seriously. And because I'm such a trip and because I got fleshly ways like every other man here, when I feel the devil trying to get me to look or do anything that's going to get into my marriage or mess up my marriage, I get an attitude. And I start saying, I have the Holy Spirit. I don't have to look at that. And I don't look at that. Woo! Oh, good God am I. See, the devil hates me, and I hate him too. Yeah, he hates me because he's a defeated devil. I don't look at that. And you be saying, Pastor, I can't help it. I can't help it because, Pastor, I, my phone is where I look at my phone all day. You grown, right? You have the Holy Spirit, right? Put it down. Put it, I have control. I will not cuss. I don't have to go over there. I will not sleep with this person. Come on, raise your hand, everybody. Come on, I don't have to do, I don't have to lust. Greater is he that is in me. Y'all better get a hold of this. Pastor, but my one daughter, she makes me go off. Can't nobody make you do nothing. You have the Holy Spirit. But this husband of mine, he make me, he can't make you do nothing. You have the Holy Spirit. Don't give nobody that much power over you. Don't give nobody that kind of control over you. Nobody can control you. You have the Holy Spirit. You don't have to look at nothing you don't want to. You can turn that thing off in the name of Jesus and then go to praising God for the victory and say, I didn't look at that. And then the next thing you know, he'll give you more because you go from strength to strength and glory to glory. And yes, I will say this out loud. I don't struggle looking at stuff. <laughs> Am I human? Yes. I have moments I'm human, but I don't struggle. I overcome that in the name of Jesus Christ because I'm not going to let the devil have that. Oh my God. We got to stop. Uh, Y'all tired of me. Y'all are so tired of me. I can feel it even through these airways. Listen, uh, but we got to stop. But I want everybody in this church realize that you have power over every area of your life. So whatever you've been defeated in, it's over now. Well, pastor, it's easier said than done. Who said it got to be easy? It's possible. You, you ought to tell that struggle, this is the last time. Mm. Let me pray for you. I want the fruit of the Spirit to fall over all over your life. Come on, will you say this out loud with me? Just say, come on, I have the fruit of the Spirit. Come on, you can type it in in the chat. I have the fruit of the Spirit. See, when you receive Christ, you receive the Spirit. Romans 8, I believe, Romans 8, if you have not the Spirit of God, you're none of His. That's what the Scripture says. You have the Spirit of God. Come on, will you just say that? Say, I have the Spirit of God. Yeah, type that in the chat. I have the Spirit of God, and therefore, I have the fruit of the Spirit. I have allowed the fruit of the Spirit. Come on, repeat after me. I have allowed the fruit of the Spirit to take root in my life. Come on, fruit of the Spirit. Mm, take me over. Take me over. Flash out of me. Lead me. Guide me. Love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, kindness, self-control are in me. They will come forth. I will be a blessing to people. Not because of me, but because of God in me. I receive it now in Jesus' name. Come on, will you clap your hands if you clap them like you believe it? Come on, give me some of the emoji praise. Will you do that? Come on, give me some hearts out there. Come on and give God some praise like y'all believe it. Amen, amen. God bless you tonight. Listen, this concludes our series for the month of January. Back to the basic. Back to the basics. And uh, from now on, this year. We're not only just operating in the gifts of the Spirit, but we're also operating and walking in the fruit of the Spirit. Yeah, we're going to show some fruit in 2022. Listen, grab a seed right quick. Come on, I need everybody that's watching, just grab a $10 seed. Some of you that can give 20 go ahead and do that. Some of you can give more. But I need you to grab a seed right quick. Come on, sow where you want to go. And this season, in every Wednesday, and we're going to continue this even what we did last year, that on Wednesdays, our Wednesday night seed time is for our Matthew 25 Alive Outreach Ministry. And uh, I need every person that is watching me, grab a seat. There are many ways to give. You can give online. Also, we're still in our fruit first fruit season. We'll be in our first fruit season all the way into February, even in February next month. It's our first fruit season. And uh, feel free to... Uh, Get a first fruit offering 
listen, pastor, am I going to hell if I don't give a first fruit? No, we don't believe that. I don't teach that. But what we do teach is that we honor God. We honor God because it's in his word. And if we honor him with the first of our substance, that he will bless the rest. The first will always establish the rest. And we're just honoring God. So when you get blessed, listen, you need to get a first fruit off and say, you know what? I, I want to plant this seed right here. But listen, if you believe in the work that we're doing here at Greater True Vine, I want you to sow on tonight. All right? Will you do that? All right. I don't usually spend a long time talking about the offering, but I wouldn't say it if we didn't need it. I have no problem asking you. Uh, my integrity speaks for itself. All right? Uh, also, if you need prayer tonight, call that number. Call that number that's on the screen. You can email us. Somebody will get back with you within 24 hours, and uh, we would love to pray for it. Just, just call your name out. Even if you need prayer tonight, just type it in the chat, and we'll call your name. We'll give it to our intercessor prayer team, and we'll start praying this week for you because we believe in the power of prayer. Amen. Well, God bless. Listen, I'm so excited, y'all. I'm pumped up. Sunday morning, can't wait, 10 a.m., in person as well as virtual, 10 a.m., come here. Listen, we're still in our storm series. We're still in our storm series, and um, you want to be in the place, all right? Also, I'm excited about this women's conference. First lady, oh, my girl, uh, our women coordinator here, They, I'm excited. It's women's weekend, and uh, it's on the screen. The dates are there on the screen. Listen, all women, all women, come on, you need to share in this. You need to be a part of this. First lady, Lady Colbert, my girl, she has a heart for women. Um, so, listen, she has great things lined up, and I'm just excited. And, brothers, you know we're going to be here to support. All right. All right. Remember this. I got to go, y'all. Y'all been great. Great crowd. Remember this. Why settle for good when great is available? God bless you. I can't wait to see you. Bye-bye. On behalf of First Lady and the Women's Department, we have some very exciting news. Women's Weekend is coming up. We want to invite all our GTV Nation sisters and we encourage you to bring a friend. That's right, Women's Weekend. It is February the 18th through the 20th. That's a Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Come out expecting God. We'll see you there.